Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. So what about other treatment around surgery? So the chemotherapy can be given prior to surgery or after. It's usually, it usually is given either um, in one of those instances, but not both. And then recently we've been thinking about, well, what about immunotherapy? So I think you've probably heard about chemotherapy and immunotherapy, but I'll, I'll tell you just um, a, a general summary in case you haven't. So chemotherapy, I think of as Um, a chemical that directly kills a tumor. Immunotherapy has a different approach. It actually stimulates your immune system to fight the cancer on its own. So it doesn't do any direct killing. So different mechanisms here and and different toxicities also. So this, um, there is a trial recently looking at um, chemotherapy and immunotherapy prior to surgery and then following that with just immunotherapy. It's still in the very early phases, but they did report out some um, data recently. So there were 28 patients that were eligible um, starting back in in 2017. 25 of them received the treatment before surgery. 18 went on to surgery and 15 at that time point had made it on to the post-surgery treatment. So one of the things we think about when we're considering a treatment before surgery is whether it's going to prevent someone from getting to surgery. And if you compare the, those numbers with people that got get chemotherapy prior to surgery, they're pretty similar in terms of completion rates of, of surgery. So there are no early safety signals that suggest this is preventing surgeries. Um, and the type of surgery used in this trial is really uh, more consistent with what we use uh, recently, which is the pleurectomy and decortication. So just thinking back to 2019, this is a really wonderful slide by Dr. Nowak um, showing that if a patient was not a surgical candidate, so we're moving now from the surgery realm into we can't do surgery, we really had um, one option as the first treatment, which was chemotherapy or to support the patient and manage their symptoms without any anti-cancer treatment. So that was, a, that was pretty straightforward. Um, And then we had um, a a very important trial that looked at combination immunotherapy. So two immunotherapy agents, ipilimumab and nivolumab versus um, the standard chemotherapy at that time. And so this is again in patients that have, are not eligible for surgery. And really in summary, I just wanted to point out a few things. Overall, they found that the combination immunotherapy was better than chemotherapy, when just looking at the whole population. When they started to look a little bit closer at some of the groups, the difference was particularly stark in the sarcomatoid and the biphasic group. So those two types of mesothelioma that are not epithelioid. And this was mostly because chemotherapy was less effective in these groups. For epithelioid, which is the most common, combination immunotherapy and chemotherapy were actually pretty similar. So how do we decide? Um, First, if somebody has a sarcomatoid or biphasic histology, we generally recommend combination immunotherapy unless there's a contraindication to that. If a patient has epithelioid histology, then we would would have a discussion about whether to use combination immunotherapy or chemotherapy first. The side effects of immunotherapy are an important thing to highlight. Um, So because this activates the immune system, it can really cause inflammation in any organ. And this figure shows basically all of the different areas that you can see toxicity. The most common is itching, so that's inflammation of the skin, diarrhea, which would be inflammation of the gut, and fatigue, which could be inflammation of the thyroid or just generally a side effect of treatment. So what happens when you experience a side effect? Um, Generally, the medical team will um, decide how severe the side effect is and decide whether it requires steroid treatment and then whether to hold your immunotherapy. So if the immunotherapy is held or stopped due to to a toxicity, how does this affect the disease? 
And actually in the three-year update of the clinical trial that we were talking about testing combination immunotherapy and chemotherapy, they looked at this and they found that people that had mild to moderate side effects from immunotherapy actually did quite well. And this is not actually that surprising because it's having a mild or moderate side effect from immunotherapy shows that the immune system is activated and it's doing its job. So it's hopefully also fighting the tumor. So we've talked about immunotherapy, we've talked about chemotherapy, but what if you combine the two together, which is a paradigm that we've taken from non-small cell lung cancer, the most common type of lung cancer. Um, there's a clinical trial that is looking at this, um, looking at a combination of chemotherapy, cisplatin and and an immunotherapy called brevalumab. The, um, this is in the first treatment if a patient is not eligible for surgery. The early trial looked at 55 people and 48% of those patients had 30% or more shrinkage of the tumor. And the diagrams of, on um, this slide are showing basically any line that goes down is a decrease in tumor size. So, so you can see the majority of people are having some decrease in tumor size on this regimen. So is chemotherapy and immunotherapy better than chemotherapy alone? That's the question that this um, trial, the DREAMER trial is trying to answer. So they are testing that combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy versus chemotherapy alone. And this trial is recruiting patients right now and so should help us answer that question. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter Send us feedback, share your story, donate, and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.